we should be live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 30th episode of The Pip. As always, I am Jacob, and I have my good friend Khaled here with me. Good evening, everyone. So, I, from my understanding, do we both have a few topics for tonight? Yes. Now, um, outside topics or the questions of to ask each other? Uh, outside topics? I, mm, I got a few. You can start. Okay. Where would you like to start? D&D or outside topics? Uh, outside topics. <laughs> All right. I was just making sure the music was playing. Mm-hmm. Likes to be weird sometimes. All right. So. Let me open up the outside topics. But I know one right off the... Uh, base of my head the back of my hand so to speak how Hollywood has already bought the rights to make a Reddit versus Wall Street movie or GameStop yeah. movie yeah a bit weird you know that was absolutely caught off guard by that I was at least um I don't know what to say about it other than I'm not going to watch it. Yeah. I think that was a poor choice. (laughs) And I really don't think anyone's going to watch it. Maybe in the future, you know. People be like, did that really happen? But not immediately. So I think, so think about like, uh, what's it called? Social Network. You know what I mean? So Social Network the story of Mark Zuckerberg and and Facebook and that thing, like, I remember working at Target and they just played it constantly and people kept talking about it. It was like, are we really here? And what, what they did, though, is they introduced, um, they, they padded it with names, like, because uh, this is, what's his name? Um, Jesse Eisenberg off of, like, that Zombieland Heat. You have Justin Timberlake, as like the little like millionaire entrepreneur guy and then you have army hammer playing the twins so i mean like they gave enough like quote unquote pretty people and famous people into the movie that caused people to go watch it you know what i mean so yeah so i mean i don't know who they're gonna like revolve it around but what they'll probably do is they will They'll kind of do that same thing where they'll go, this is Wall Street and take like Wolf of Wall Street kind of tactics on either making it real or just like really breaking it down to like a characterizations of all these characters. So it's just like, yeah, cocaine and we're women and womanizing and we're cool, but we're that Wall Street D bags, rock and roll. And then cut to trap music playing and a bunch of Reddit guys that everyone can like root for kind of thing. You know what I mean? So it might be loosely based or it, it might be, who knows? Because I mean, like, look at Silicon Valley. Who would have, like, said, yeah, let's wa- have a show with all these seasons about a bunch of nerdy guys doing, like, startup projects. So, I don't know. Okay, so, this is also related to this. Mm-hmm. Discord banned Wall Street bets. Oh, wait. <laughs> Discord. They just is, is that the one that did the whole like flying streamer message? What? Like <laughs> like the banner? Like the banner? Flying streamer message. Look up yeah, so. look up the plane banner. Um Wall Street Bets plane, plane banner. I, I've seen that. How they flew it along like New York, I guess. Yeah. But Wall Street, I'm pretty sure Wall Street Bets is the one that organized all of it. So there you go. A perfect face for the movie. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) there you go. Like, they'll they'll probably use him as the, like, he's the the champion of the little guy kind of thing. 
if they don't put that one dude who like sold his stock mm -hmm. um that he earned from like gamestop and like donated yeah, yeah. a bunch of game consoles and stuff i'm gonna be upset they're gonna be looking for a right tussle yeah, so they, they, they've been the, the R Wall Street Bets Discord. Very interesting concept. I actually think it plummeted earlier. The stock did. Oh. I'm not no. sure. GME. Yeah, no, it went down 60%. Hmm. Um, that's minus $135. Hmm. Oh, the the person who would be the face then would probably be was it Jamie Rogozinski? I don't know who that is. <laughs> he's uh, he's a founder and the creator of Wall Street Bets. And so I guess that would be. I'm trying to think. I'm like looking, trying to see like who would they get to play him. Same guy. Well, the Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> <laughs> electric boogaloo <laughs> that's funny so from Wolf of Wall Street to Wolf to Wall Street <laughs> that's very funny yeah so it's very interesting to see what that means yeah they're gonna I feel like whoever they're gonna cast they're going cause like looking at the guy He's just like average Joe Schmo, so I'm very sure they're gonna like Hollywood, nothing like him kind of thing. Like, was it, um, what's his name? Uh, Joseph Gordon Lovett being, um, Snope, where it's like, or Snope, or Snowden. And he's just like, you look nothing like Snowden. And, eh, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, when do you know when Resident Evil Village is coming out? Um, it's funny because I just let me see that I just looked at it. Re Village, which is very interesting to me because Capcom doesn't want people to call it Resident Evil Eight. Have you seen that? It's like don't call it Resident Evil Eight, but we're literally going to show in the promotion material that the Roman numerals V I I I can be seen within. Yeah. within the village. So this is like, how do you not want to call it eight, but then show us eight? It's like it's Res it's Resident Evil eight. Um, and so initial release date is going to be May seventh of this year. Um, because I, I saw this article saying that Jeanette Moss, the actor who like who voice acts voice acts the bug skin witches, she actually yeah. passed away earlier this month. At like age thirty nine. Okay. It was big sad. Um, yeah. Because I think earlier she said she had. Let wait. Let me see if I can get this person. So. In a okay, an early version of this article that I'm reading said. It was COVID-19 and Crohn's disease, but it mm. wasn't. So I don't, I think they don't have the Indefinite. reasoning. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Rather than have the family have that privacy. But it is sad because that game, the game ain't out yet. You know, she didn't get to see what she worked on. Yeah. And even the the meme that she's contributed to, you know what I mean? Yes, I don't think she's the big one. <laughs> no, no, no. But no, like, like I thought it was just. I just thought it was just the lady. But then I start looking at all these other memes, and there's like, oh, we see you too, daughters. We see you too. <laughs> so, um, which is I and I. I will, I'll see you say on this one. Um, it's very interesting the concept. I call it the the two B. The two two B to two B effect, where if an artist or creator wants to see like 
a live action version of the things they create like oh man i really like it when women wear like half pauldrons and and like trench coats that are cut open you know what i mean like all these different things it's like just create it <laughs> like create it and get it big enough because cosplayers um because what is that um near automaton automata yeah 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 just i mean that character like 2b's character like any like any guy who's just like i'm gonna draw this girl who's wearing lace and a, a bathing suit but she's also has a leather jacket people are like you're weird bro but then cut to this character and there are people like i'm gonna freely i'm gonna happily dress up like this character and that guy's just like yay <laughs> It's what I wanted to see in real life. And so, I mean, regardless of Capcom's feelings on, um, I need to get her name right. I know it's Demetri Demetrius. It's Lady, let's see. I think it's Lady Demesis. Let's see. Lady. I think it's actually in my. Um, um. Demetriaku. Demichiku, Demichiku. And you're telling me that if she's like clocked in officially at nine feet, nine six, nine six, nine my six. yeah, goodness gracious, yeah, like, that, that, is, that a is a Capcom fact. <laughs> <laughs> like just, and the, like the cosplay is on the same height of tier when it comes to people just like coming out of the woodworks with it um it's funny because it's like both my hope and even uh roberts too is that she has some body horror because people keep forgetting about marguerite from resident evil 7 and just the terrible thing she turns into so it's just like don't get don't get uh comfortable with capcom not playing on body horror Alcina, it's her first name. So I'll see Lady Alcina. Let's call her. <laughs> With the video game talk and the fact that I've been live streaming Cold War recently. Mm -hmm. uh, Warzone actually had a glitch to where if you wore like a certain ghillie suit, it would turn you legitimately invisible. Oh, that's amazing. So, like, apparently it says, according to the PC Gamer article, beware, Call of Duty Warzone players, a five-month-old perchable skin turning players invisible. So players wearing the bugged outfit will appear partially invisible to enemies the further away they get, making it the most effective ghillie suit you could ask for. <laughs> that is amazing. Touching in some Metal Gear Solid Ghost in the Shell action. Um, it so people don't actually know how long the bug has been in the game, mm. but the skin has been put in August. It came out in August, so mm. apparently, if you're just looking at it they start to go invisible 34 meters away <laughs> if you're aiming down like sights it's 55 meters away and with a 4x scope it's 125 meters away that's funny um yeah that it, it's really f funny because um we that's basically around the time we stopped playing because we stopped playing after October because mm -hmm. that's when the zombies thing ended. Mm. I'm kind of glad we, we stopped playing before that glitch was like took traction because that would be a whole lot of rage moments. <laughs> you know, it's it's very funny when it comes to glitches like I don't I don't get upset with them, especially if they're super funny and I've dealt with them. Like, I find it hilarious. I more laugh about it because it's just like, it's not that, well, I mean, yeah, granted, someone might be like exploiting it and then in turn cheating. 
but I don't know. I, I find it like uh, entertaining. Like when, uh, what was it? Infinite Warfare. There was a shotgun that was also a sniper rifle. <laughs> but they didn't fix it correctly. So when you shoot like a sniper rifle, or sorry, when you turn into a shotgun, it has the range and the accuracy of a sniper rifle. Like the spread is infinite long. So people will be like beside you and the spread will still hit you. And they're just like shooting randomly. It's like if you're in anywhere in their like actual line of sight, then you're dead probably. It's so funny, man. And people were just like dropping and you saw people like quitting games or switching to that gun. I'm just laughing my head off. I don't know. I don't know. I find them, I find them funny because it's like they'll get fixed eventually. And I don't really worry too much about like my KD, my KDI or my kill death ratio. So. So, I want to start playing Rust again. Hmm. Not only because of, like, the offline TV server. That had a, a big part to play. But, I don't know if you know just how, like, complicated Rust can get. Yes, I've, I've watched some really crazy videos on Rust. Okay, so do you know, like, all the crazy traps you can make? Well, I've seen a guy do that where he builds, he builds a, what is it? He built basically like a house and what it really was, was just a sawed death house. Um, so yeah. yeah, I've seen a few of the traps, like they build like the, the false bottom floors and a whole room of turrets and just dumb stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, like, I think last year, the year before they added electricity. Hmm. And so you could, like, open doors from, like, a whole nother house and stuff like that. Hmm. Basically, it may, it opened the possibilities of making traps. <laughs> and it was crazy, but at the same time, I enjoyed that aspect of Rust mm -hmm. a lot. Just because I could fool around with, like, the wiring, put light bulbs up make my own traps have like a control room for all the traps now get this this is like some crazy stuff happening right mm -hmm. they are making vending machine drones so in rust people players can set up vending machines where they put an item into it and they're like, okay, it costs this much. And if another player comes in and puts that much into the vending machine, they get that item. Okay. So they're having for February 4th, uh, not 14th, but 4th, a patch is going to go through and it's going to add literally like Amazon delivery drones <laughs> kind of thing. And yeah, now the, the reason why they're doing this is so a player that has just started doesn't have to walk all the way to a vending machine that mm -hmm. be being guarded by another clan waiting for you to like buy something yes so they can kill you and take it it's so you can be in a safe area you can buy it and you can um have it delivered there and so i can kind of just I, I know somehow it's gonna be turned into like murder <laughs> <laughs> and there's no it's rust it's gonna be turned into like a murder service a like murder a hitman service. like drone like cause I don't know how they're gonna work I don't know if they like fly to you specifically when you call them or if another player can control them hmm. and if that's the case can like a, like a third party shoot them down and take the items out of it that's what i was wondering like is it going to be like that um basically like an animation where it kind of just appears within your vicinity and drops or can a person just like watch the drone and go okay let's find out who's who has this money to be buying drones and then go to them and then just shoot them get the drone kind of thing yeah, because, like, imagine, like, a crazy, like, one of those crazy, crazy huge, like, compound bases with the giant stone walls and everything. Mm -hmm. And then all you see is, like, two drones go out, four drones come in, though, like, three more go out, 
the two that left before come back they're just delivering all this stuff to people it's because... like Go ahead. oh my god it's like literally i can see someone just like oh another drone flew out pop pop <laughs> shoot it down Take i it. wonder if you like sticky bombs and just go hey stick <laughs> stick the bomb on the drone as it's lowering and then just detonate <laughs> just to, like it won't destroy the package but then just blows up people who have scurried to get it that's oh that's the best part right because i had that idea too so in the game you can have c4 Ooh. in the c4 sticks to stuff that's one of the like so you yeah. can have like bean can grenades you can mm -hmm. use some bean can grenades to make a satchel charge mm. And then you can satchel charges are like janky. You don't you don't want to be using them forever, but they're easy to make. Mm -hmm. C four is like top of the line gear, but I can see someone ordering a bunch of stuff and having it delivered via like multiple drones, right? And since C four is so strong, it can destroy buildings uh, very easily, like different building parts. And if someone's not smart enough, they might have the drones return right where their tool cupboard is the tool cupboard is what stops other people from building in your area you have to be authorized on it okay. and i can see someone ordering something putting a c4 on the drone following it back to their house so when it goes inside it blows it up mm. but i can see them like doing it like multiple different times and that like once the drones leave i wonder if they can be like nah like they have to come back because if they if they aren't like nah they they have to like complete the route kind of thing yeah if they call out like five drones it could just be over for those people <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i don't know i think it's it'll open up some silliness i think I agree. Um, like I'm watching a video on it. And it seems like they deliver to certain vending machines. I'm not I'm not quite sure. I know Noah's been wanting to play Rust again, so this might be like the perfect opportunity to hop back on. Try and play some. Might see if we can find other people to play as well. Um. So, with that out of the way, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, you and Mike <laughs> quiet. So, I am a listener. Robert is in the chat. I think he might find this very interesting. So, do you know what the magic card, like, Black Lotus is? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, an Alpha Black Lotus was sold on eBay for $511,000. Yep, they're expensive, bro. Well, that was like, yeah. Yeah, it was sold for five hundred k, And so... It was the first Magic CCG card to sell for over half a million dollars at open auction. Um, other collectible card games cards may have sold for more. Unique, usually unique single printing cards, but if they did, there's no public record of it. Um, past Alpha Black Lotus cards have gone for as much as 250k. Yeah. So that was double the price practically. Ooh. It was a little bit over double. So uh, and also the case that the card was in was signed by the now deceased magic artist like Christopher Rush. Okay. Uh he's the one who painted the art for mm -hmm. the card. So that probably explains that the the price spike yep <clears throat> that was crazy 
Robert said he blames the Pokemon craze going on right now. <laughs> I can agree with that. So I have a funny story about Pokemon cards. So years ago, it had to have been like elementary school, right? It was mm. my birthday. My mom got me like a lot of Pokemon card packs, like the newest packs that had come out recently. And I opened them all. And every single pack had like a really good card in it. It wasn't like, like pretty much every pack had a hollow in it, but it wasn't the packs that were guaranteed in ho like a hollow. Cause I had like, I got Groudon EX or something like that. Mm. And I got Rayquaza. I don't know. They were really good cards is what I'm saying. And I, I didn't even have them for one day. <laughs> like I had them, I put them in my pocket. We go celebrate a party or whatever. Come back. I go sleep. I wake up. I change my clothes. I go to school. Because my birthday usually landed on the weeks that school started. Yeah. So I, I go to school. I come back. My clothes were washed. I look in. I'm looking for the Pokemon cards. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and I find them and they're all just like ruined and I was like oh my god I am so upset <laughs> and that's why I don't trust myself with Pokemon cards anymore just bad experiences <laughs> bad experiences all around that's a, that's a lie I um for some strange reason when I get like cards that aren't Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I, I tend to have pretty good luck with them. Like, I pulled at, like, Red Battle Games for Force of Will. I pulled full art cards, like, almost all the time. And then for the few times that I bought Pokemon cards, there was usually a a full art card in them as well. Hmm. And it's not like I was buying box sets of any of them. It was like packs. So, but Yu-Gi-Oh, nah. And I don't really buy singles of Magic, so I can't speak on that. Single packs of Magic. So. I'd like to find Magic cards somewhere. I know they're somewhere. I don't think they got thrown away. They were in the like. Hundreds, I do believe. The hundreds? Well, well, I have no clue where they went. I need to get some more magic cards. I just want to go through them. I don't really play anymore. I love the art. Like, magic art still is phenomenal, but... Hmm. I gave my magic cards to someone I know that, that they were going to use them. Hmm. I wouldn't do that with my Yu-Gi-Oh cards because I'm still going to find someone that's going to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, yeah. But I need to get, like, a, a starter deck or something just to play with, like, Noah in them. Mm-hmm. But there, there was no need for me to have all those cards. <laughs> so I was like, hey, I know you're going to use these. You can have them. They're just sitting there. They're like, thank you, and then when you leave, they just like start chewing on them. Big sad. They, or, or they look at them and go, oh, these are all trash, and just throw them away. No, nah, they, they've seen them before. No, 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 I'm just joking. Do, do, do. So. Hey. What? This is a D&D &D question. I feel like, unless you have a topic you want to talk about before we get into D&D. &D. Um, only two just like little blurps. One, of course, it has to be Elon Musk name attached to it, but they're like, mm -hmm. uh, supposedly Neuralink implanted a chip in a monkey's brain and it can play video games with his mind. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, okay, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's the point where it's just like, 
oh well yeah that makes sense or it just sounds that absurd to be either real or fake but elon's must name attached to it kind of thing um it's the i can't think of it's like uh like back in the day when anything's like sexual they go they call it a dutch blah blah or if anything is like mystical and and just mis like mysterious they'll go a chinese whatever or oriental this and so um it kind of falls into that thing where it's just like enter a centric like billionaire millionaire's name and then attach something strange but it's i mean it comes in from um like insider so probably true but it's kind of it kind of gets just like okay what 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 else is new i um, don't know the monkeys playing video games <laughs> i get i guess they have the like the um they have the video game up and they watch the monkey playing it oh um but the, the funny thing is they've done that before um where they're talking about like how to see superpowers from marvel match the superpowers in real life and what we can do and so some guy actually built a controller he was playing i think tomb raider and this is like early early 2000s and he was playing they're playing tomb raider and it's like a device you just put on your head so it's not really like the most groundbreaking thing except for the fact that now you're putting inside something's head which is i don't know i i'm a i'm a big old ghost in a shell fan so so when you said he was playing a video game in his head i was picturing like it wasn't actually on a screen <laughs> no he's playing pong okay does that even <laughs> class as a video game nowadays I mean, yes <laughs> it will always no. be a video game yeah, no. I mean it is. That's a, that <laughs> is a that is a pre two thousands video game. That's it's like how Pluto isn't a planet anymore. <laughs> well, I mean in that case, Mario is pre two thousands, and Mario is still the king of video games. So, but it's been redone. But it's the original is still great. It was, it was, um. And the other thing, is, the <laughs> it's for it's fine. First, you have to push that bolt up there, Sisyphus. Um, no, no. But the other thing is that uh, EA Games love them, hate them, whatever. But they're going to reintroduce uh, college football. But after, you no, know, a lot of people were upset because it's college student. I mean, I actually do enjoy watching college football. Not like I'll sit down and like, oh my god, let's do it. But if it's on, I'm enjoying it because I think they, there's something more like energetic about it. I guess these kids are like, I mean, the guys are hungry. They want to get these sponsors, and you know what I mean, like. Yeah. Um, but what they're what they're doing though, and, and it's funny in that same that same aspect is that they're possibly just not going to have the the players' names. Like they're just going to go, it's football, and just take away the college students. Um, because I know there was a big What's issue that. I don't, you know, I don't know. I do not. I guess so people can root for their, their team, play the teams that they love, but just not the the players. I don't know. Because it was a big thing where they start looking at this where um, college football is like a like million to billion dollar industry. And these students don't get paid a dime. <laughs> like, like they don't get paid a dime for people running around with their names on the jersey and just everything they don't get paid for it and that was like a big issue um it's still a, pro a pretty big issue in the same time but it's just like these kids aren't getting money and it's like oh well they're getting paid for experience and, and that kind of came back to where a lot of people like large amounts of like um well i'll say in the climate where there's a lot of like uh youtubers and content creators who are like hey artist you can have the honor of making me something for exposure kind of thing where it's just like they think that they should work hard for them because they're a name but not get paid or not paying them for it kind of thing so i don't know we'll see but yeah those are the other two really interesting like huh okay we'll see how that goes i always thought that some people mm. probably liked football more for the players than rather than just the team yeah like i'm I'm sure there are some people that are like, okay, this person plays for this team. They're now on that team. I wonder if that's the same in college football. Maybe. Because, I mean, like, people do rep their colleges real hard. Um, yeah. 
so I don't know. It's going to be very interesting to see. I mean, because the like think of like older games without when it's like instead of like the uh, Joe Montana this or Madden that. A lot of games they didn't have the football players didn't have names at first. Like these were just, or they would have like fake names kind of thing in your earlier football games, and then they finally start like putting real people to it. But I don't know. We'll see. I have no idea. <laughs> See, I, I, I remember telling you I played like one football game. Mm-hmm. And even my friend Tyler doesn't even know how I did it because he was the only other one that played football. And I, I don't know the rules of football. I don't know how to play it. I was literally just doing what I thought would get the ball to the other side of the field in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all that really is. And he goes up the punt, like the ball through like the field goal, and he kicks it. And before it like goes midway to go, like the arc, it's midway through the arc to go through the field goal. My guy just like leaps up, grabs it, and runs to their side and gets a touchdown. Mm. And I don't know how I did that. He didn't know how I did that. I just did it because I was spamming buttons. That's funny. And that was probably the last game I played because I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. But I know, like Tyler, he really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. So I can I can kind of see why people enjoy it. I just personally don't. And yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Is it funny to see how people like mad people get? Yes. Surprisingly, I think people get more aggravated on like the basketball games than the football games. Because mm. I don't, I never hear someone, I never hear people go, oh, like one, not one v one me, but you know, like battle me on the NFL game. It's always like catch me on NBA. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's what I hear. And there was that one guy that was like, "Catch me on Fortnite," and he had no respect for me, from me. <laughs> he, I looked I mean, down on him. <laughs> I remember sitting at like barber shops, and there would be that. There would be the the NFL trash talk, and, and they'll be like, "Whatever Madden's coming out," and some guy like waiting to get his hair cut. And the barber that's like cutting my hair is just like, oh, you think you're good? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll use the, I'll use my Seahawks. Like, okay, okay. And they'll just talk back and forth and be like, we'll do it. And they'll have like, they would have like Madden tournaments at like the barber shop kind of thing. Um, I was like, that I was like, that's the beauty of like when they go like, like black barber shops. Cause there's just like the, like, People, it's an experience. <laughs> like if you ever get to go, there's this crayola. Well, like if everything, when everything's back to normal, I should say. Because um, I remember like first going to uh, one of the barber shops. Like my mom's like, let's try it. We'll go to this one. Me, take my me and my brother. And the whole time they're playing, like they're having like a Tekken three tournament. And just like, okay, people, these guys are watching like kung fu movies. I'm like, all right, this is this is the place to be. Yeah, so it's like it's a whole different monster from just like hey, I'm gonna go to supercuts and just let them mess my hair up <laughs> so yeah bro. the supercuts the Walmart one I don't yeah I think, is it I don't know I, th- I know there's there was one in, in the mall and then uh, there's two different like barbershops I remember the military barbershop you'll you'll tell the lady I want it this way she'll go okay and then just freestyle and just whack your hair up and like, cool. And I still have to pay you for this because you're someone's wife on base. Great. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so what is one magic item that you really want? It doesn't have to be homebrew, just like a regular mm-hmm. one. It could be. It could be either. It's up to your discretion. Well, magical item that you really want to test out in a game, but you're mm-hmm. too scared your players will abuse it. Hmm. So, 
I don't. I can't say there's any really. Um, the Vorpal Blade. Wait, well, it's because in the Vorpal Blade, so Dungeons and Dragons, like so, Wizards of the Coast when they're designing Five E, granted it's more accessible to new players. They did a thing that I do love, and that's like DM has a choice kind of thing, and they so like the Vorpal Blade one, you have to roll it, you have to roll a nat twenty, but it's not guaranteed that it would cut anything's head off. So it can, but then they also put into consideration if you have a four foot blade and you're trying to cut through uh, like a 20 foot neck, like a neck, you know what I mean? Like a neck complete, like 20 feet around, it's not gonna work, but it's gonna do this many damage dice. So it's still gonna hurt. (laughs) It's still gonna hurt a whole lot to whatever you're hitting it with, but it's not going to, do that um and technically i there was a there was a sword um that i was like eh, could that work in the game and now it's in the game so it's not you know what i mean like it's, it's elder fang isn't it no it's not elder fang it's not elder fang um wait do we know what it is nope but it's in there it's in your possession um it's in our possession. <laughs> yep what do you mean what do you mean? What I mean? No, I can't. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. The the new sword? Maybe. There's no way it's not. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I was like, know, <laughs> for a second, you had me confused. I was like, literally, just me and Cody use swords. And I was like, oh, yeah, Noah got a sword. That's a thing. Yeah. Um, I could have made it more mystery and say there's a weapon. Ooh, but it's fine. Um, yeah, so it, it it comes down to what that what that looks like. Um, because I think I go more towards would these items work for the party? Like, I mean, the movable rod, while fun, I just don't think like you know what I mean. Like, I was like, yeah, it could work, but I don't feel like the flair of the the characters we use it because, like, there's like the wine, the water skin, and the wand of ice that doesn't really get used. Um, there's other items. There's like a scroll of of uh, stone shaping that nobody uses. <laughs> I didn't even know that existed. Um, yeah. So the little the little clay sand golem came to the door and had the scroll, which belonged to Jog, the the elf druid. And so it was just like, excuse me, just kind of walked past everybody and just went to the backyard to patrol the sand. And then when Ortorius was fanatically trying to figure out how to get the the golem to do stuff he had to find the he found the scroll and then they're like yeah it's just a scroll of stone shape he's like anime throw it on the floor in frustration (laughs) so but yeah so there's a stone shape that flute isn't magical but for some strange reason I still have that character sheet (laughs) (laughs) um yeah, so I mean, there's, there's trying to think of other items that they all. I think that's about it. I mean, you, the trickster coin is in, is on the field, but not really in play. I should say. I wish um, but, I could just like take that and flip <laughs> it for him. <laughs> that's funny. What's the best part about it is it's probably stored on me, <laughs> <laughs> and I just don't know where it's at. I think it would, well, it would it always goes back to the person. Um, so it probably like if you like if you've ever had to like watch someone clean out the pockets of a, like a toddler where there's like old M and M's, some stale bugles, some like sticky stuff that's probably juice for some stupid reasons in their pocket, a old receipt covered in said juice, like a marble, like it's kind of like that where it's just kind of probably like the sticky pouches that are on Malice's person is probably like, eh, <laughs> they're coin. And then he's like, oh, that's my treasure and takes it back kind of thing. Um, is that all the while scroll of, of is that scroll of stone shape like a one-time use? Mm, yes. Dang it. Um, unless you're a wizard and you write it down in your spell book, yeah. That's just a one-time use. I would use it. I mean, I didn't know it existed. People- you're just one goblin in a in a bag away from getting it. You're right. I'm gonna ask for it. 
that is his job. Um, but yeah, yeah, but no, there's not really. You wait. Know. You want me to tell you what I would use it for? Mm, kind of, but also no, because I do enjoy the surprise. Okay, um, I won't tell you, but I'm going to ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine yeah, yeah it's kind of like i that's why i like rolling before someone tells me a dc um like the dc saving throw i don't know like while i i will be fair on it i just enjoy it being rolled and then the discovery of it but but yeah i i prefer like the schemes of things because it causes it causes more i think of organic reaction versus me having to think about it for a week of like what will the thing do like or person or whatever it's kind of like i'm in the person's shoes and this is like in their face what is their first reaction to it so that's kind yeah. of what it's like if no one obviously no one's used it so far yeah so i might as well just take it because i know with my crazy schemes i could use mm -hmm. it for something <laughs> You use it just to make a little block, just to trip Demogles, and like, really? You you just waste it's a the scroll that level spell, <laughs> <laughs> and yet still, I still kind of see it. No, um, I might, yeah, I might I, uh, gather it for a future scheme that we've all pitched in together for. Because I think that was probably. Uh, I'm trying to think of what. Because they, let's see, so Hall of Elementals, so it's fire, water, they went into wind, and earth is the last one, so it's, it was probably their, like, their second or third, maybe third, second, uh, yeah, maybe it was, like, probably their second or third game is where they found it, so they've had that for sessions, years, actually, yeah, so. Yeah, years, years. So it's, it doesn't matter. I think what happens to it in that aspect. If anyone yeah. argues with why I'm taking it, I'm just gonna be like, "Listen, y'all. According to Khaled, y'all have had this for <laughs> literal years, and y'all haven't even thought about it." Yeah. So, I'm just taking it because <laughs> I can use it for something. <laughs> I can use it for some stuff. I don't know. Um. And it's very interesting thinking of like your meat grinder tombs, things that I don't really like. Meat grinder, meat grinder dungeons, really. Um, like Wait, my like, meat grinder tombs? No, 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 no. Meat and and the you in a generalized state, like you, like as as DMs or as D and D players, you get these these dungeons, huh. uh, and they're just called meat grinders because they're really some of them are unbalanced and unfair, but they're really made just to kill characters. Um, so they're called meat grinders. Um, so Tomb of Annihilation's like predecessor is one of them. Tomb of Annihilation, they kind of toned it down, but it also has this stuff in it as well. Um, but I love like so Stone Shape. You're like, oh, that's kind of just a, a goofy, a goofy like um spell. But like, and I've never heard anyone do it before. But it's like if you're stuck in a room full of a gas, like gas is seeping into the room out of a out of a tube or vent, just stone shape it airtight. <laughs> like it'd probably piss off whatever DM thought of like filling the room up with gas, but there you go. Just stone shape it like airtight and like, yay, we don't all die. Um, it's very funny because of that the new Gothic uh, lineage coming out. Yeah. There's, there's some characters that don't breathe. <laughs> like they don't need to breathe. And there's, oh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's DMs that are like, oh, that's so unfair. I'm like, come on, man. Just come on. Like, if you ever play Eberron, um, Warforged, just don't breathe. It's it's fine. Like, let the, let the story happen. I could use it to expand me and Gion's cave. You could. You could. But according to the spell, mm -hmm. it says, I'm, I'm just going to read out the spell just for context for the viewers and everything you touch a stone object of medium size or smaller or a section of stone no more than five feet in any dimension and form it in any shape that suits your purpose 
So for example, you could shape a large rock into a weapon idol or coffer. Or make a small passage through a wall as long as the wall is less than five feet thick. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also make a stone door or its frame to seal the door shut. The object you create can have up to two hinges and a latch, but a finer mechanical detail isn't possible. So that that's it. Yeah. So I probably couldn't make a big room, could I? Mm -mm. That's a big sense. But, you, but you probably could get cobalts to dig in there for you to increase the size and then make the stone-shaped door for Nazir's menagerie's hoard. Yeah. Nazir, yeah, Nazir's menagerie. I don't know. I have I have another idea for it. I'm not gonna say what I'm gonna do. Yeah. I'll debate it. Um, that leads me to another question, in kind of a weird way. It's still D and D. Mm. What is one plane of D and D? So like the outer planes mm -hmm. that you would like to run a game in that you haven't. Um. So astral would be interesting. Um. Uh, so limbo as well like because with the astral plane it's used as a like a, a graveyard for gods so yes. you start getting to like these cities and there's just like floating corpses and i love the aesthetic of like these giant corpses like i'm a big old gardens of the galaxy fan so you have the celestials um that have like so the nowhere is literally in the floating head of a celestial yeah. so one of these these sentient beings that are now dead and revered people live in it and same thing with that one so that's one i mean any and the other planes are like the elemental planes i'm a i'm a sucker for elemental stuff um so like wind probably and then fire would be the two that i would i would like to play in well i wouldn't want to play in fire you know what i mean <laughs> the plane wise um like what about like yeah. mount celestia and stuff like that yeah, I mean, like going towards like your your heaven and hell would be interesting. Um, but with that, it was like who knows? Especially with more, with more like stuff being shown with dealing with Democles. Like when it comes to having like a Tiefling or Asmars on the like on the field, so to speak, then there's already that chance that you might touch into these places yeah um and yeah so i also i like the astral plane like you were saying because mm -hmm. of the fact that it's, it's used as like a gateway between all the outer planes yeah so like you could randomly find like a i don't know a red per like portal per se pool and if you jump through it you're on this other plane of existence yeah it's, it's really interesting because there is a it's it's probably Democles's nightmare um so it's called um sigil um, oh yeah oh yeah. In the, the, the city of doors yeah and so, <laughs> um, just that concept um it's a really cool idea though um, so really cool I pictures were, at first i thought you were gonna say like an astral plane ferryman <laughs> oh yes that can be it's very interesting with sigil though because i think sigil is part of planescape um no i think it might be forgotten realms it might be both i think planescape plays a lot more with it uh, there it does Ooh, it's also i mean it is in the the dungeon master guide so Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's going to be the, the Dungeon Master's Guide because the Dungeon Master's Guide touches on all all realms, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then just your independent ones, kind of split up to where they where they be. Um, yeah, I think those those would be um, the the planes I would I would operate in. I think I would like Sigil actually. Hmm. 
sounds interesting. So, did you have any D and D things that you would like to ask me? Question? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'll, I'll jump on that one with so what like uh so what other like campaign setting than forgotten realms like Feyrune would you like to like delve into either one shot or campaign so wait Feyrune so yeah so Feyrune and forgotten realms are the are the like Toril operating where most most D and D happens? I think Eberron could be cool. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're gonna we're gonna go with uh, everyone's dream, Dragonlance. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 Do you know the names of them all? Um, so there's Wild Mount, which is the critical That's, role. Yeah. There's a, not a Vernus, what I'm doing. So there's Greyhawk. Um, so I'm thinking of the active ones right now. So there's, um, so let's say Wild Mount, Greyhawk, um, Asterisk with Greyhawk, Iberon, Theros, um, Ravnica, and I think there's one more. I think that's it right now. They haven't, they haven't introduced anything else for right now. I mean, technically, you could do um, like Ravenclaw or Ravenclaw. Ravenloft? Huh. I would say so I've already delved into Theros and I'm bringing that, like I'm merging it with Faerun kind of thing as mm -hmm. you know. Because uh, after our crossover made for the perfect the chance to merge them in some ways, because I like gr Greek mythology. Yes. And it, it was like, it's a port of a port of Greek mythology. Mm hmm. Because it's, yeah. I would say that, but I've already done it. So, surprisingly, I like Eberron. Eberron hmm. is like a specific thing. That I enjoy probably because of the D and D online game because yeah. that was based in Eberron, where you play as like the Warforges and stuff. Yes. Uh, as a kid, I didn't pay attention to most of that stuff, as in um, like the backstories and everything. But mm -hmm. I I do remember how everything looks, and I always enjoyed like the way like the art and stuff like that. At least for the D and D online. So whenever I picture Eberron, I picture like how that was set up, kind of. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I think I would enjoy Wild Mount. Hmm. I have that, but I haven't gone through it as much. I've only gone through the Wild Mount book. For a few certain things I wanted to look at. Yeah. But I think that's interesting. And then isn't Salt Marsh in Greyhawk? Yeah, Salt uh Ghost of Salt Marsh is in Greyhawk. I would like to do something with that, honestly. Because oh. that's where Beholders came from was Greyhawk. Ooh. Now they're just everywhere being douches. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think with that one, like it's kind of, it's kind of, I don't know, like again, I do avoid the the through line or the the touching into critical role territory, so I probably would, I would probably wouldn't go too much into Wild Mount, but um, Iberon, I would like to touch more into because of all the different ideas that I feel are a little too like um, anachronic for for uh the medieval time frame of uh the forgotten realms uh so like again like your pulp fictions and so forth and while high well high adventure yes but like that pulp comic no neo noir kind of weird thing um 
and just I mean some like spell gunslinging and train heist feel that you get from it yeah and the fusion of because I do love this funny thing is like while I don't permit it in the Forgotten Realms just because again the time period I do love the idea of fusion of science and magic and just what that looks like but again for whatever that's whatever thing and then people would finally be able to play artificers as well yeah um, finally um <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah i wouldn't mind um but then all i mean like like ravnica i would actually like to touch into ravnica um because of the concept of like the spectacle like that that grandeur of introducing everyone to the new like the different um like the different uh factions mm. oh and think about that though so you know like how the factions work because they're they're based off of the colors of um the cards right yeah and each faction so we i every faction you're introduced to we change the lights in the room oh to represent the faction and their and then music when they're all in the same room we just hit, we enter seizure mode <laughs> And then just have everyone arguing and just there'll be someone in the corner frothing at the mouth and then a guy doing the robot but we never invited him and why is he only in his whitey tidies it'd be perfect man complete bedlam but yeah, yeah so i think that would be really cool um because there's like the circus of was it the circus of flesh the circus of um it's a part of the the red faction i think it's red black um i cannot think of the name of it but it's really just it's really just like they have like blood carnivals and circuses with spectacles that people can lose their lives and they're dangerous and it's just like this craziness kind of going on uh, but each faction is phenomenal like did you have you ever read ravnica or let you see that book nope you said yes. i couldn't touch it what I to nowhere near it <laughs> i tried to hold it one time and you smacked down my hand oh yeah well that was because you had your hands were covered in peanut butter and soap I'm like, but why both? <laughs> I was watching it off, and I got this <laughs> Um, and I, I know that it's 11:30, but the, another question that I would like to an or ask you is that: so, um, what would you like to incorporate into your D and D? Um, not like not really a spoiler, but something that you think that would help, like enhance the game or so forth. That's a good question. I try to bring them. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, if I think something will help a lot, then I go ahead and get it. Yeah. So, like, currently I'm up to date on it. Hmm. Uh... Hmm. I think better miniatures, like more miniatures. For some reason, I think whenever I'm looking at a mini, it, it at least helps me base what I want to do. That's why I like using like the board when we can, at least, you know? Yes. Uh, for me, it helps set up my next attack because I can be like, okay, I want to flank it and I can tell... I can do all the math out before my turn happens, mm -hmm. for the most part. So I, that that's why I was thinking about getting more, at least various sizes, like a dragon, one, stuff like that. Uh, okay. Uh, another thing could be like a little portable monitor. So I could plug it into my iPad, and if there was a picture I wanted to show them, I could just drag it over to that. Does that yeah. make sense? So. No, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. And that could also be used for a multitude of things. It wouldn't just be D and D, you know? Exactly. What about you? Um, I think actually the, the well, so um it's one thing that I always talk about and I would like to do is making more of a soundboard so when it comes to ambiance, it just hits a lot better. Um, 
and have it dynamic so things are behind you if they're behind you things are in front of you and they're in front of you um but having it where it's on like my i not ipad what i'm doing <laughs> have it where it's on like a a tablet or whatever okay. i think that would be really good to have um just to again i feel like immersion is one thing um um i don't know and i i mean the one the one thing that's like really big i think would be great to have we've talked about before like the, the projector wall kind of thing where when the environment changes i can change the like i can change the actual wallpaper so to speak yeah so like if it's a if it's a haunted or snowy forest then those are shown like behind me would be fine or to the sides of the players or whatever um or even going super big brain and have it where it's almost like every wall but the ceiling too so if it's a beautiful sky i could turn the ceiling into that beautiful like cloudy sky or a night sky or lightning tracing across it kind of thing um i think it just adds more um it is very funny to see like what music has to play when it comes to like characters because there were times where like the, I won't say that the characters are or the players are being disruptive, but they're just kind of like a little talkative. But then when the music starts and it's the right atmosphere for the music, they're kind of like, oh, okay, this is what this is the pace you're setting, so or the tone or whatever. I try to sit there quietly unless I have a joke to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair unless I have a joke that's funny I'm on my best behavior unless I'm not and basically my statement right there <laughs> that's funny um, which is fine I will save my other questions for another pip okay for D&D so, it is now a little past 11.30. Would you like to do the segment intro? Hey, hey! So, we do a segment, and it's called, What Are You Watching, Playing, Reading, Listening To? So, we'll start off with you, Jacob. What you got for us? Okay. So, what I'm watching is I actually have the uh, stuff pulled up. So I will go basically just keeping up with ReZero. I'm keeping up with all the new anime that's coming out. Got gotcha. So Horimiya, ReZero, Mushoku, Tensei. That's the Isekai one I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. uh, the Inuyasha sequel and Promise Neverland season two. Keeping up with all those. They're something, if something interesting happens in any of, the, in any of them, I will talk about it, but but one anime that I've been watching recently, like binging, because it's all come out, mm. uh, is Mahuka. I don't know. It's basically, I know the English name for it. It's called the like Irregular Magic High. Okay. Um, but it's season two of that. I've been watching that. It's basically about a bunch of magicians in modern day age and they use these things called like CADs like CAD on the wrist to activate magic spells so it's like a coding sequence that activates a spell it's really strange, it's cool um, although there are some people that are a specific class that are like above the rest that appear occasionally that can cast spells without using those uh. And it follows one of those people, basically. He's OP. It's one of those animes where it's like he's too, he's OP and he's going to win pretty much every fight he's in. But mm. you just want to see how he does it. Because it's always okay. in a unique way. Um, so I'm watching that. I watched like the first season years ago, so... I had forgotten almost everything. <laughs> uh, with that, I've been also like 
not production wise i've been watching a bunch of live streams so like mm. twitch uh ludwig been watching him recently very entertaining uh he's recently become popular from my mm. uh from to my knowledge he's recently like kicked off like within the this year and last year or something like that yeah i, I would say it won't 2020 2019 is when he kicked off might be or god it's 2021 um manga wise just keeping up with my hero mm -hmm. that's nothing new there listening to i've been listening to i need to find the people because they're a really good group. It's um the longest Johns. I don't know if you yes, know. I have been listening to them. You've Absolutely. been listening to them recently. Yes, sir. And there's a good reason why. You'll find out. <laughs> oh God. Um, <laughs> I've been listening to them for about the past month. Hmm. Just like they've always been in my YouTube playlists. Uh, and mainly like um what songs are it? Oak Ash and Thorn. Listen to that, you know, Lever, Johnny Lever. Mm -hmm. Wellerman and Old Maui. Mm -hmm. Been listening to those songs like specifically from them. Other than that listening to playing I'm playing a lot of Call of Duty Cold War mm -hmm. been live streaming it but I think we're going to be live streaming some Apex for the next few days nice. new season just dropped today so the new heroes out and everything new map well not new map rearranged map <laughs> edited so it's been fun. What about you? So, for me, um, watching some of your streams, um, for watching, um, most of the time just, just, uh, talking in the, on Discord and, uh, whatchamacallit, now there's Santa Savage, which I will keep harassing you and Josh with every once in a while. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> um let me see what else um watching oh um i just finished aho aho girl um anime so it's it's like a slice of life but the girl keeps harassing this one guy she's and she's like for the lack of a better word i mean aho is just another word for saying idiot in japanese and so she's just like in love with bananas. She loves bananas and she's just goofy and happy go lucky. Um, and then the main character is just like, leave me alone because she's like, oh, we're going to get married. You love me. Um, and he's shutting that down constantly. Um, but it was funny. Um, it's very interesting seeing like, like how she really is. And like there'd be parts in there where she's, she's kind of like, again, just like that free spirit. So it's like there's a chance that she's just not dumb. It's just that she's just free spirited and she's kind of thinking outside of the restraints that people want the world to be in, especially in Japanese kind of culture. Yeah. Or you just her just being super dumb. But either way, it's fun. It was a fun, goofy little watch. Um, let me see. Um, uh, I'm also still watching WandaVision, and man, it's like they those episodes are not slow burn like someone's like oh the slope no <laughs> episode four and i'm like my goodness it's spicy and so i think wandavision's really good it's really good i'm excited to see where it goes what that means for the mcu uh what does it mean for doctor strange and multiverse of madness um so hopefully that will be very uh revealing and satisfying like hopefully there'll be a pay payoff for that yeah 
um, reading. Uh, so reading, it's a little bit of just like random, just different books that I have. Um, and then I'm also reading that, was it Chio San? No, it's just about, again, it's really weird. It's just like the weird, I'm not big on slice of life manga or anime unless there's some absurdity to it. Like it just can't be straightforward. It has to be something goofy or whatever. Um, and it's very interesting seeing the main character because she's a giant gamer of how that reflects like American games. Like what the, the manga ka thinks of like American gamers. And just because of like how she plays and how she views gamers in general and so forth. Um, and then just kind of watching what she does and like, oh, that's relatable to people I actually know. Um, I got it really don't. Who's it? Who's it relatable to? Um, <laughs> a lot of a lot of players. Um, Robert at work is my best friend. Um, a lot of guys in the military when they would play certain games because I didn't get onto online gaming. Well, that's not completely true. I played a few online gamings, but I our games. I've just never. I never did the whole like, um, like online binging. I don't know. Maybe that's not completely true because I, I, there's been times I've played Call of Duty until the morning. So, um, but it's usually I play in the morning because I know I don't have to work the next day or go anywhere. So it's I could sleep in versus like, oh god, I wish I was dead. I can't get up, kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, I think it's it's very interesting. Also, I'll I'll add to watching um, Smosh. So a lot of like Smosh shows I would watch. Not really like their skits, but more of their like gaming and just goofy stuff they do. Um, and then Craftsman or Steady Crafting with the Craftsman, really good. Craftsman Steady Crafting. It's a, it's a puppet and it's a nerd and it's just phenomenal stuff. Um, I am wanting to get into Stuff of Legend. Hmm. And so what that is, have you seen that? I have not. I have not seen so that. Stuff Stuff of Legends, one guy obviously connected to Smosh, but actually two are in there. Um, one, um, he goes by Jovenshire. Um, he's has some affiliation with Smosh, so he's the DM, and so what they do is that they'll they'll play the game, and then every once in a while cut away to puppets. And the puppets are acting out the parts that have happened, or they're talking about at the table. Um, so... A little bit harming quest, but a little bit cranky anchors, if that makes sense. Now, were you old enough to know what cranky anchors was? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, so cranky anchors was a, a show on Comedy Central where um, celebrity comedians would come on too, where they would uh, they'd make prank phone calls, and then they would take the prank phone calls and then take them and make them into actual like um like little little skits with puppets hmm. if you if you ever hear someone's like voice not voicemail but like um what is it called like a message thing go you uh you got mail i got mail yay that's actually a part of them um so yeah it's just like the jerky boys again definitely know you don't know jerky boys but that concept they'll go they'll call they'll prank the person and then they'll turn around and then make it into a skit um uh, with puppets but yeah so Seems interesting. I think it's on the second episode, so um, I'll give it three episodes in, and then I'll watch. I'll just binge them in like a little like a binge bite. I'm gonna call it some like yeah, it's called bites. So that we're gonna we're gonna make that a thing. So binging is watching the whole show. Bites are catching like three <laughs> like multiples, like little tiny bites. Um, but and then listening to um, Dakota Moon. Just found out about that band. Don't um, know who that is. Either it's an older. Band. It, so it's it's R and B. So they consider R and B, but um, but it has more of like a Fleetwood Mac kind of sound to it. It's really yeah. interesting to explain it, like a a, a, a slow um, CCR sound, like so yeah. not some of like their Fortunate Son kind of stuff, but just it's really just kind of like subdued Bob Dylan thing to them um haven't got to hear like a whole album um but black moon is a really cool like chill out and drive song or just 
sit back and read or sketch sounding song so um and then the longest johns again uh just because of what that will entail for uh the justifiers bowl um it's very funny because that one was um so robert's when i went to go visit um robert and jacksonville thing so we were listening to it um like his brother-in-law was playing it whatnot so but yeah that's about it i think for me um i am interested is there oh i finished up american gods that's another one american god season two i was about Beautiful. to say that to be like i heard you finished another show <laughs> Nah, like just beautiful man like it's there's some different there's some deviations on it but at the same time there's like i'm kind of glad there's deviations and the like the the acting like that's one that i think you would love to get into because especially with like lovecraft country mm. like american gods that like american gods helped me not binge watch uh, Lovecraft Country again, even though it's still good. Like you, you can't go wrong. But um, yeah, like if you if you ever have that like itch for for something to watch, dealing with like mysticism and gods and so forth, and you're kind of like, well, I can watch Lovecraft Country, then just American Gods, like super cool. Um, maybe I can get the the others because I like because there are well, I mean all the gods are involved, but. There's some things with Norse mythology, so I bet our boy Noah would enjoy it. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it for me. I think. Alrighty. Well, since we still have a little bit of time left over, I mm -hmm. do have other D and D questions. Okay. We can just go back to that. All right. So. I would like to ask who in your current campaign do you think is going to die first? Hmm. Not because of you going outwardly to do it, but just because of how reckless they play. I mean, see, that's kind of hard to say because sometimes it's not the reckless player that goes down first. It's just the like so because I, I don't really think that any of them are going to die. Like it's like oh blah blah's gonna die, but I think that there's a because like think like so my first person to go ever go down was Arturis, so the tank went down first. Um, but in this last fight, I think almost everybody went down except for the druid. He okay. First of all, he didn't take a single point of damage. <laughs> I really just didn't go down. He <laughs> he played to his strengths, and that was range. Yes, um, which I like. I've said before, like, because um, I had a player that was a druid, and he was like, oh, I don't like being a druid. I can't do anything. And I explained to him, it's like, a druid is a super utilitarian, like, utility knife or swiss army knife of possibilities within just one circle type yeah uh, and he was just going like, uh and they, he did sabotage his character in a way so then end up playing another character whatever but not only do i like that i feel that trey brings some like fire emblem final fantasy tactics to the field <laughs> yeah um but he also plays a druid exactly what I was I was trying to explain. Like he is the example of a druid where he's just like, I got these things for you. Um but I still got stuff up my sleeve. So you can get past my animals, but then you're getting some lightning and some tidal waves. So you mean like he can he could really control the field. His poor animals though. You know, he murders them himself. I was I'll say and and the last session was like his animals died like they lived unloved by him <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's like I mean, he was fair. trying to kill me noah too <laughs> <laughs> legit though if i hadn't rolled above that save like mm -hmm. the dc i would have been down to five hit points <laughs> oh boy 
I don't know if I told you that. I think I did. You did not, no. Oh. So that's how I remembered that I, I did. It was opposite because I didn't take the hit because I remember thinking, man, I'm glad I didn't take that because I would be at five hit points. That was like, what? <laughs> Good boy. Um, which I think I think last session was a really fun, a really fun session. Oh, I did. Um, too. I agree. Um, and I actually am excited about. Hold on, I'm dodging cat sneezes, my dude. I love you. <laughs> um, because he'll again he'll get in my face and like, hey, I love you. You want to sneeze? Um, but yeah, so I I'm also excited to see what your actions have brought as My ominous actions. as well it, are as, you, as collective you, well, yeah you as in a plural your okay. your actions plural so um <laughs> yours specifically um how dare you let Malas get his finger cut by ice shards um i think i think there was a bigger how dare you put that horn on damocles's head and call it oh. a demon <laughs> no, I mean, as written, there were like I, th I can only find two, but I'm very sure there's three different ways. Um, oh no, there are three ways. The la the third way was a way that none of the players really wanted. So there's other. There was another way to get that demon, and technically, like inside baseball meta, that version was better for you because the other version was much harder. So, oh, okay. I did a good thing. <laughs> We're going back to everyone thinks Nazir did a bad thing, but he actually saved us secretly. Yeah, kind of. I There's mean, a count going on. Don't don't question the count. <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah, because I mean, I I I mean, I guess like as DM, I don't see it like, oh, this action is detrimental or oh, dang, it's just kind of like, let's see what happens next. It's not a good or a bad action. I, th I I think the only uh, like only character action I've ever like, what are you sure was the whole like Kira laying down thing. <laughs> like that's that's literally been like my only like, um, okay oh, why? Wait. wait, so before the we reached the, the podcast, you said mm -hmm. you said it's not it doesn't have to be the most reckless character to get down first, right? Yeah. Who's the most reckless character? Um, Sounds like you got so, an answer for that. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 no, I do have an answer for that. I mean, so currently playing the most reckless character will be, um, would be Nazir followed by Demicles, right? Oh, as damn. character. <laughs> um, I yeah, the most reckless, right like Demicles, because Demicles would do things. So I think sometimes it's a sliding scale, because sometimes it's it's reckless on what they're doing and other times it's like oh it's actually well fought so a sliding scale of reckless would be Democles and nazir um but then followed by galarian and that concept i think the more prudish characters would be um the most prudish would probably be fjord and then gion um and then probably like kira so like Kira, it's very funny because Kira and Arturus almost have the same amount of recklessness depending because there's times where Arturus is like, I pull out everything that I'm just going to swing on this person. And then Kira will sometimes be like, I think this is a bad idea. Or she hangs out with Nazir and Demicles and go, yeah, let's do it. Bad idea team. So, you know. <laughs> I like to think of Nazir's action as high risk, high reward. Sometimes. I mean, stabbing a griffin and flying out the window getting juggled and then thrown into a window that was instinct <laughs> that was... <laughs> what, I saw what big was... thing I kill big things so, so the true reward was um I, I would love to put the audio start putting audio up but it's like the so the true reward was you having to go get your sword back and for some reason I accidentally talk like Sylvester Stallone <laughs> 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 that was the reward like the guard had a stallone voice it was like yay worth it so um, I, that could have been so much better and i think that experience has truly changed my character 
<laughs> because now he started to create these mounting weapons. The concepts of, yeah, of trying to hang on. Yeah. Uh, especially with the idea that these said griffins um, ridden by people who you now know where their origins are. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, maybe maybe some hooks and grapples and such might be the best thing for us in that aspect. Um, I would hopefully, say that's very funny. What's that? I was going to say, hopefully the new production is done. Because I mm -hmm. believe I sent them with that group of notes, didn't I? The blueprints to the dwarves. I don't, not with the letters that you sent to everybody, no. Because that happened before you thought of this. Okay. Well, I'll send it when I ask for the scroll. There Perfect. We go. Hopefully that happens before we go back to Chandelier. Wait, you've been there before? Yeah. You have not I been to Chandelier. from it all the time. Oh, see ya. <gasps> Lady see ya. <laughs> and it's all coming full circle. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, though, thinking of the Griffith thing, and I, I've mentioned it before, and I find it funny because in my head, certain, certain like, situations call, cause sound bites. So I can think of is just, um, you're just, like, talking, and, again, the zero's on the ground, like, lay on hands, and you're just kind of like, oh, my sword! And he's like, ha, well, that's what you get. There was kind of, like, joking that you lost your sword, and then... Arturus is like, give, you know what? Give me the sword. Oh, no, my other sword. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know I mentioned before, but I was like, I love the dynamic of goofiness in there. So. <laughs> I'm defenseless. <laughs> He's like, do you really take my sword? Nah, that's just, I'm just joking. I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, you think that's a good place to end it? Absolutely. Alrighty, this has been the 30th episode of the Pit Podcast. 30 if already. Would... Yes, <laughs> soon to be 50 in a few months. Um, if you enjoyed tonight's podcast, please hit the follow button. And if you want to venture into our older podcasts, you can find them at Oni Central on YouTube or the Pit Podcast on YouTube or Facebook. And if you want to tune in to our next live podcast, you can do that on Tuesdays from 10.30 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and every other Friday with a guest. Uh, and that'll be it. Anything else you want to say? Nope. Everyone have a good night and thanks for joining us for our 30th. <laughs>